Michelle and today I've got for you an intermediate level workout on the reformer and it's going to be a lower body focused. Uh, we'll move a little bit of everything but mainly focusing on our hips, our knees, our ankles, their kind of strength and stability um, and getting them moving. Okay so that's kind of going to be our top of mind for today. Uh, so go ahead and start. We're going to start laying on our backs. Um, for my equipment, for my Marathu Reformer, I have two heavy springs and one medium, which is two reds and one blue for uh, the leg and footwork we're going to do. On yours, it might be a little bit different. Okay, I have red, blue, and white springs for balanced body. That's kind of like red, blue, and yellow springs. Okay, so you're welcome to go heavier or lighter than I do on anything. Um, but that's where I'm at is two heavies and one medium. Okay, so start down on your reformer. If for your height you need to adjust your foot bar settings, uh, please go ahead and do that now. So start with your headrest flat. Have your heels about sitting bone distance apart up on the foot bar. And then just rest your arms right down by your sides. Okay, we're going to start with a nice big inhale, feeling that neutral curve under your spine. And then as you exhale, just gently use those abdominals to draw your hip bones towards your ribs a little bit and find an imprint. Yeah, and then we'll release again as we inhale. Yeah, so just leave your thighs pointing straight up to the ceiling and just thinking of your pelvis rocking towards you and away from you. Yeah. So if you were lying on a clock face, you would just be kind of tipping your weight from 12 to six. Okay. And you'll feel a little bit of a lengthening through the low back as you tuck under and then find that gentle curve. Okay. Now end up in your neutral with that space underneath your lower back. Keep your hip bones pretty level and now just let your right knee drop to the side as far as it can go without your left hip coming off the mat and then exhale and come back and then go the other direction. Have a little bit of push into the foot bar with your heels. You should be able to feel this through the glutes. Yeah, so it's not just a lazy flop. It's really energetic through the backs of the legs. Yeah, do that a couple more times. So your abdominals and your arms prevent you from rolling off the carriage with your pelvis, okay? Do that a few more times. Just see where your range is at with those hips today. Ribs nice and heavy. All right, now come back to parallel thighs and let's do that with both legs. So now again, I'm doing this with pressure with my feet and then just wave both knees out and then come back in. You don't need to necessarily turn out your feet just let your knees fall to the side, okay? We've got the push, almost like you would be getting ready to straighten your knees, but we're not quite yet. So have a nice bit of kind of tactile feedback into the bar with your heels. Okay, now pause in parallel, take a breath in. Now as you exhale, we're gonna keep our thighs in line with our hips and just roll up into a bridge. Get up to the top, take an inhale, and then exhale. Slowly peel your spine back down one by one and so you find that nice neutral curve under your back again. Yes, yeah? so we use the abs to tuck under and then take the spine up, opening the front of the thighs. Feel a little gentle drawing down through the ribs and then roll back through. Okay, let's do that two more times. It should feel really nice on your spine. Feel like you're dragging your heels to the floor. Now we've got pretty heavy springs on, so we shouldn't have too much trouble with the carriage moving. So it should stay still. Do that one last time. Now once you get up here, we're gonna stay. Now this is a little tricky. Don't move your left side. I just want you to wave that right knee out a little bit and then back in, just like we did with our hips down. Let's do just the right leg a few more times. Now it's not gonna be huge. My foot is barely moving. It's just my knee kind of waving out from my midline. And then do that with the left leg going open and close. And you should have a pretty good view of your hips and your pelvis. So take note if you see that right leg moving, try to leave it in place. Okay, now let's do both legs just like we did on the mat. So wave both knees out a little bit and then come back to parallel. Yeah, open and then close. So I use the outer thighs to open, inner thighs to draw my knees back towards each other. If your knees go a little past parallel, almost knocking together, that's okay. As long as that feels all right on your hips and your knees. All right, one last time. End up back in that parallel position. Lift up to your best highest bridge and then slowly roll back through your spine. 
one more time. Ah, oh, hey, very nice. All right, now leave the feet parallel. We're gonna start going into our leg and footwork. So same neutral space under your spine. Take your inhale to prepare. And then as you exhale, take a nice long press out to your long legs and then return. Yeah, so you wanna press until your legs get almost all the way straight and then come right back in. Yeah, so you don't wanna be locking into the back of that knee joint. Good, very good. Now, if you want to think about when you're breathing on what movement, you can. You can think of exhaling on the push inhaling on the return, or just kind of breathe naturally, whatever feels better to you, okay? All right, now press out to those long legs and stay. Now lift one leg up to tabletop. Try not to move the carriage or your pelvis at all, just a gentle float, and then replace the heel back down. Good, now try that on the other side. Feel like you're driving your heel into that foot bar, almost like you could make your leg like a half of an inch longer if you just pressed hard enough. Yeah, so that's lots of stability through that whole bottom leg. Push, push, push. All right, now pause with one leg in tabletop. We're gonna return the carriage on this single leg and then replace the foot down. And then do that again. So we're gonna push out on two legs, lift one, come in on a single leg. Yeah, two to go out, one to come in. Yes, so we're loading up that one leg twice as heavy on the return, yeah? On the way out, the two legs share the tension, and then on the way in, whew, we get it all to that one side. Good, do that a couple more times. Your weight should feel even across both sides of your pelvis, and then return. Okay, let's do that one last time. And then come all the way down, whew, very nice, all right. Let's wrap our toes around the bar. So you're gonna bring your legs all the way together if that's comfortable. If it's not, keep a little bit of space between your legs. So take the balls of your feet and then just wrap your toes all the way around the top, almost like you're a little bird kind of gripping onto a branch. And then you'll drop your heels as far towards the floor as is comfortable. So you get a little stretch through the back of the ankle and then we'll start pressing in this position, yeah? Kind of just getting reoriented into how it feels in this new spot with our feet, okay? So hopefully you should feel a nice connection from the very, very top of your inseam all the way down to your ankle bones. Yeah, you don't wanna feel like there's big gaps between your legs. Your kneecap should be looking straight up at the ceiling, yeah, rather than like rolling in and looking at each other. Yeah, it's almost like your legs are going cross-eyed. We don't want that, keep them going straight. All right, now push all the way out and stay. Just drop your heels as far as they'll comfortably go. Feel those calves opening up a little bit. Good, now we're gonna go into a little pattern with our ankles. So with your legs long, lift your heels as high as they'll go. Bend your knees with the heels high drop your heels at the bottom, and then push out to straight, yeah? So I lift, I bend, I drop, and then I press. So there's four movements, up, in, down, and out, yeah? The more comfortable you get with that, you can start to flow it together. So it's almost like one kind of seamless, circular movement with no ends. So good. All right, now let's come in and pause. So my knees are bent and my heels are high and we're gonna reverse this movement. So with my heels lifted, I push out, then I drop my heels under the bar. Try to feel those glutes on the sides of your hips active. Bend your knees and then lift your heels. Yeah, one, drop two, come in three, and then lift four. Yeah, so you can even place your hands there and really see if you feel any activity on the sides of your hips. You should, that's really gonna help keep those legs and glutes nice and active. Okay, let's do that two more times. Try to keep the heels pinching together. Very good. All right, come down to the bottom. Take your heels out to the far corners of your bar. <clears throat> We're gonna be 45 degrees externally rotated, okay? So not as wide as you can go. You wanna draw up a little bit with those inner thighs, 
Okay, so now exhale to push out here and then guide the carriage back down. Yeah, so just kind of start finding your pace. Again, you can connect to your breath. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, blowing out through pursed lips if that feels like a good ah, place for you to be with your breath. <clears throat> okay, so now let's come in and stay about halfway in, so almost as far as far in as you can go, and then just take some little tiny pulses back and forth, really pretty small. Feel like you're pulsing down, down towards your heels. Good, now let's make those pulses a little bit bigger. Maybe go up and in like four or five inches. So we're kind of pushing out to that middle range. Good, now let's push all the way out to the top range so my legs get straight and bend a little bit. Straight and bend a little bit. So now we're pulsing more up, up instead of down. Very good, do that three more times. Legs getting long on each pulse too. And then last one, come all the way down. Good. All right, so now take your legs into internal rotation. So only if this feels good to you, you're gonna go knees and toes knocked in towards your midline, kind of like a pigeon toe, okay? If that doesn't feel good for you, you just go parallel in this wide position, okay? So that rotation's coming from the hip, feel the inner thighs glued together. Now you're gonna push away and let the knees come apart, they just naturally will. And then as you return, you're gonna squeeze them back together, yeah? So pushing away, almost like a zippering action of those inner thighs, yeah? They stay together as long as they can and then they get back together as soon as they can, okay? Whew, let's do that a few more times. Really good to get the hips strong in this position, yeah? We do so much parallel and turned out. Sometimes this one gets a little less love, okay? Now come in and stay. Let's do a couple pulses here. Leave your knees together and do those little tiny small pulses. And we're gonna stay with just these small low pulses for this one, okay? So squeeze the legs tight, pulsing down towards your heels. Five, four, three, two, one, and then press all the way out and then come down to the bottom. Whew. Okay, very nice. So now going to that turned out place, so 45 degrees in that external rotation, now we're gonna challenge ourselves a little bit by just keeping the tension on the springs the same. So I want you to push off the stopper like a inch or so, just enough to get those springs tight. And then we're gonna leave our heels where they are and just wave your knees and toes to that internal rotation and then wave them back out. Do that again. Now, if you're wearing socks, they might kind of tug around on your feet while you do this. It's totally fine, not a big deal. You can fix them in a second, okay? So keep that relationship the same. Knees, toes, hips all go into the same rotation, in and out. All right, now let's pause in that external rotation. Keep the carriage where it is. Just do one knee at a time. So take one knee, internally rotate it, and then open it back out. Oof, that's pretty tricky. Yeah, so that takes a lot of effort to not change your pelvis. Yeah, so you shouldn't get any more weighted on either side. Keep it even. Very good. All right, now let's dip one knee in and stay. If you were to look at your thighs, they should be on the same angle, okay? Their one shouldn't be totally aimed a different direction. Now from here, press out with your legs on this angle, so both toes are pointing to the same side, and then you return. Good, do that again. So hopefully your torso, your pelvis, everything is still square to the ceiling, and it's just from those hips down that we find this angle. Yeah, let's do this a few more times. I know it feels weird to kind of learn new patterns and pathways for our body to work, but that's good. That's how we learn new things, yeah? So knees and toes to one side, and then let's come in just before we touch the stopper and switch sides. So turn out one leg, the other leg follows to internal rotation, and then I push back and forth. 
Yeah, so my thighs are parallel with each other on this 45 degree angle. Yeah, my left thigh is externally rotated 45 degrees. My right thigh is internally rotated 45 degrees. So it's everything we've already done, except we're just doing two kinds of rotation through the hip at once. Yeah, now let's come all the way in, turn back out, and then you can just let the carriage come all the way down. Whew. Okay, hug your knees into your chest. Oh, hey, that was a lot of good leg work, okay? So let's roll over to your side to bring yourself off of the carriage. All right, so now drop your foot bar down just so our legs have a good full range of motion. All right, so now I'm gonna take off one of my heavy springs. So I'm gonna be left with just a red and a blue. So one heavy and one medium. You can do lighter if you feel like you need to, okay? So now, lay back down. Make sure your straps are on your shoulder rests or wherever yours hang so that you're ready to grab them, okay? So we're gonna lay on our backs. So kind of get nice and safely down onto that carriage and then take the strap off of one shoulder rest. I'm gonna do my right leg first. You can do the same if you'd like. You're gonna push out with your legs off the platform and you're gonna slide this foot all the way through until your strap can come up behind your knee, okay? So not on the foot like we normally do, behind your knee. And then we're gonna lift the other leg up to tabletop to meet it, okay? So we're gonna be in a neutral spine if that's okay, or you can imprint if you feel like you're too unstable or the legs are getting pulled off of center, okay? So find what works for you. Squeeze the legs in towards each other. Now all we're gonna do is double toe tap both legs away from us and then back to that tabletop. Yeah, so the pull is just on that one side. So we get that resistance at the back of the leg. Yes, so if you squeeze your legs tight together, they'll really move as one unit. Okay, and our back stays nice and stable. So we're just opening that hip joint and then closing. Okay, keep your lowest rib down. Now come to tabletop and hold. Drop just your free leg and then lift it up. So I keep my knees bent at 90 and open the hip and close. So the leg with the strap, it's just totally staying steady, keeping the pressure, <sighs> carriage isn't moving. Okay, now let's do the other leg. So now my free leg stays, my strap leg is gonna be the mover and just see how that changes. We get to move the carriage now, we get the resistance on the way down and then a little assistance on the way up. Okay, and all the while my waistlines on both sides are staying nice and even. Okay, now let's start to go reciprocally. So when one leg lifts, the other drops. So I'm doing both legs at the same time, almost scissoring past each other, just with bent knees. Yeah, good, just breathing naturally, making sure you're getting nice, big, full breaths in and out. Breathing out through the mouth can help you really find that ab connection. <sighs> All right, now come up to tabletop, ankles together. Now I just want you to wave your knees out like a butterfly and then bring them back together. So keep your big toes together. So if you were to peek up, you would kind of see like a diamond shape between your legs and then it would disappear. <sighs> Good, so externally rotating. You'll feel this in those deep rotators, especially on the side with the strap. Okay, now stay turned out and we're gonna do those same toe taps but in external rotation. Whew, so it feels a little different. The abs kick on the lower the legs go, even more. And then back up, good. Make sure your spinal position can stay nice and steady. All right, now just like before, come up and we're gonna do just the free leg, tapping and lifting. So the angle in the hip, in the turnout stays the same, and then we extend and flex. Now do the other side, strap leg and return. <sighs> Press and lift. So my pinky toe is getting closest to the springs. Very good. Now let's start to go reciprocally. So one goes up, one goes down. <sighs> go as slow as you need to go Whew, to be able to stay stable and time that nice and smoothly for two, and then last one, Whew. okay, 
set your left foot on the platform and just rest for a second. Okay, we're gonna do one last thing before we switch sides. We're gonna do some circles with this strapped leg. Okay, so come back to tabletop. Your left leg is gonna stay tabletop. If you feel like you want a little challenge, you can reach it to straight instead, okay? So take that strapped leg, you're gonna send it forward. Now open it around to the side as far as you can go without rolling off the carriage and then bring it back in. So I press, I circle, and then I return in line with my hip. Okay, now you're welcome to leave your head down. If you wanted, you could lift your head up while you did these, even taking a hand behind the head if you wanna get a little bit more ab work. Now it makes it harder to leave your pelvis stable. Good, now let's do a few more, maybe straightening that free leg if you wanna see what that feels like. Drawing your circles. Good, now let's reverse the circle of the leg. If you need to backtrack and bend the free leg, you can. You can set the head on the mat. Do that a few more times. Yeah, so the leg circle is continuous, even if you change up what that free leg does. Last one. All right, now find the platform with your left foot. Grab the rope and just give a gentle little pull you're bringing that knee up towards your shoulder. And then you can take the leg out to the side to stretch the inner thigh a little bit. And then you can pass the rope over to your other hand. You can push off the platform if you need to. Let the leg go the other way and get a little outer thigh stretch. Very nice. All right, take that leg out and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, okay? So put your new leg in. For me, that's the left leg. Thread it up behind your knee and then tabletop both, okay? All right, so starting with double toe taps, inner thighs staying glued together. Yeah, if you need that more supportive spinal position, you can tuck under into that imprint. Okay, now free leg tapping. So now that we've done this once already, yeah, we can just kind of move a little freer. Still thinking, of course, but allowing, just allowing our body to move through these positions. Yeah, we don't want to think so much that we stifle our movement, yeah? So finding a balance. Now let's do the strap leg tapping forward and back. The more vertical this tabletop thigh, the better. It can even go a little further from you to challenge those abdominals. Okay, now let's start reciprocally letting those legs pass by one another. So one lifts and one lowers. So good, make sure the sacrum feels heavy, the bottom of the ribs feel heavy down. Very nice. All right, now come to tabletop, big toes together, wave your knees out and then squeeze together. You might feel the carriage move a teeny tiny bit as that strap leg gets to its full external rotation. Yeah, your toes should stay perfectly in line with your midline. It's your knees that move off of it. Okay, now stay turned out. Tap both legs forward and then back. So the angle at my knee remains the same and my hip is the mover. Yes, not the spine and the pelvis, just that hip joint. Last two. Good, now on your last one, pause at the top. Now drop just the free leg and lift. So now we're stabilizing on this opposite side. Now switch legs, strap leg is the mover, free leg stays still. It's almost harder to keep this leg still, right? Because it's got nothing to kind of ground it. All right, now start to go passing those toes right alongside each other. Good, find your speed that works for you. So nice, two more. And then last one. Whew. Okay, rest for a second, whatever resting looks like to you. All right, and we'll do our single leg circles with the strapped leg. So from your tabletop, press that strap thigh forward open it around to the side and back in. Yeah, your hands can be a huge help here to keep you grounded. If you really wanted to challenge yourself, you could hover your hands. Oh, that is so hard. Your circle would probably have to get smaller. 
Yes, your head can also lift. That rope should just go right alongside your ear. Your free leg could also be straight. So many choices, yeah? Try them all, pick what's best for you. Now reverse the circle of your leg. Good, now make sure that free leg isn't moving off your midline. If it is, maybe that's a sign that you need to take away one of those options. Last one, and then come down. Whew. All right, place your free foot on the platform, grab the rope, and just gently pull. The more bent your bottom knee gets, the more stretch this top leg will get. Oh, and then let that knee fall to the side. Feel that gentle inner thigh stretch. And then move it to the other side. You can push off the platform if the stretch is too intense. Let the leg fall over. It's okay if your hip lifts a little bit. Feel that outer side of the hip stretching. Oh, all right, put some pressure on your bottom foot so you can slip the strap off. Hang it up, roll over, and come on up off your back. Ah, all right. Okay, let's do a little bit of arm work. We're gonna do it in a little bit of a challenging position to work on that hip stability we've been talking so much about. So now let's take off our heavy spring. So be left with just your lighter spring. Adjust for you, go lighter if you need to. So we're gonna come up to our knees. You can pad up your kneecaps if you need to. So one foot is gonna go on the headrest. For me, I'm gonna do my right foot. Make sure your headrest is down. And then with your opposite hand, you're gonna grab just one strap, okay? So for me, I've got left hand and right foot. You can reach through the loop or just hold the rope, however. So the higher you grab on this rope, the heavier the tension is gonna feel, okay? So put your right hand on your thigh so you have that little bit of support, okay? We're just gonna kind of find where we want our lower body position here for a second. So I want you to do the wrong thing and I want you to let your front knee go beyond your foot, let your bottom knee go back and end up in kind of a stretch. So this is not where we wanna be. This will end up in us falling over and not very good. So now come out of that, kick your front foot forward and pull with those abdominals so your knee is under your hip. Now do that again, do the wrong thing, let your knee go way forward. Now kick with your foot, use that front quad. Yeah, do that a few more times. So just kind of feel the difference. Yes, when you kick forward, you're super active and connected to that front leg and it's gonna serve you much better. You're gonna feel a lot less unstable here. So now kick forward, my heel is under knee, my knee is under hip. Now from here, I try to keep that sensation of kicking my foot forward as I pull my single fist behind me. So you can lead with the pinky side of your hand. If it starts feeling too heavy, hold lower down. Like you can hold on to the loop. If it's too easy, hold a little higher up, okay? You can also adjust the springs to make this doable for you, okay? Do that a few more times, kicking forward with the foot, shin is nice and vertical. All right, now pause with the arm forward, pull the elbow out to a nice wide row, and then return. So try not to twist your spine, just stay square. Yeah, feel that left hip driving forward, or your back hip, I should say. Okay, hey, now we're gonna add rotation. If you feel comfortable, you're gonna twist with the bending arm and then return. Put some pressure on the thigh with that hand. Move slowly, no sudden movements. Take your eyes with you. This is a tricky, very precarious position, okay? So if it's not working for you, you're welcome to do this on both knees or sitting down even, okay? Let's do a couple more. Oop, as I say that, I tip over. If you'd like, try taking your hand off of your thigh. Oh, and reaching it out in front of you. That's even less stability and support. Good. Let's do that one more time. And then relax. Very good. All right. Hang that strap up. And let's go ahead and go to the other side. So put your new knee back, other foot forward. Grab the new strap with your opposite hand as that forward foot. Hold up as high on the rope as you'd like. OK, 
Okay, now do with your lower body a couple of those kind of stretches and pushes. Yeah, so let the carriage drift back. Front knee goes too far beyond the toes and then shift. Yeah, and feel what muscles do that. So this front thigh, deep hip flexors and abdominals. Now pull your legs into that good position. Keep them as you pull with the arm and then release. Pull with the arm and then release. Very nice. Try to stay open and wide across both collarbones. Good, a few more times. Try to slow down the returns. So you're not just riding on the springs. It's like your arm muscles are the brakes to slow that down, okay? Now pause with the arm reaching forward. Row that elbow out to the side and return. Good, kicking forward with the front foot. Good, ribs are right on top of hips. Okay, now optional choice to also rotate and then return. Now that's not our pelvis rotating, that's our thoracic spine. <sighs> Extra challenge would be to reach that other arm forward off of the leg. <sighs> Ooh, two more times, that is so much activity in the lower body. Last one. Ha, <sighs> oh, so nice. All right, hang your strap up. Bring that foot down. All right, we're gonna do one last thing here. We're gonna come down to more of an all fours position. So you scoot your knees back as far as you need to. It's okay if your feet dangle into the springs. Now put one hand on the headrest. I'm gonna do my right hand. I've got it kind of on the corner of the headrest and then grab the opposite uh, rope. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the rope with my left hand, holding the loop if the rope is too heavy. Okay, so now really push the headrest away from you, ribs up. Now pull your elbow above your ribs. Now your hand is kind of like your foot before, so feel like your hand is kind of pushing the headrest forward. And now just take some little tricep presses with this back arm. Good, so you're as square as you can be. Almost like a coffee table. You want all four corners, your two shoulders, and your two hips to be level, okay? Let's do that one more time. Now pause with your elbow bent. Okay, move your left knee like a half inch closer to the center of the carriage. Reach your right leg behind you and just hold here for a second. I want you to see if you're able to balance. If it's like, whoop, nope, not happening, just put your knee down, okay? If you're having success, I want you to very slowly add in those tricep presses that we did a minute ago. And this is <laughs> insanely hard, okay? So again, if you feel like you're falling over, put your knee down, no sudden movements. Let's just do two more. <sighs> I don't think I can do more than two. Ah, one more, press that shin down hard. Oh, and then come down. Whew. Oh, so good. Don't be discouraged if that was crazy hard. That's one you need to like revisit a few times. Okay. Now let's do the other side. So I'm gonna put my left hand on the left corner of the headrest. I'm gonna grab the rope with my right hand. Yeah, although that's a little heavy for me. I might hold more like on the metal of the clip or maybe even the strap, okay? So now pull that elbow back, start your little tricep presses. So as high as you can get that elbow behind you without rotating your spine. Okay. Let's do two more-ish here. Okay, now pause with your elbow bent, keep the tension, move your right knee towards the center a little bit. Now, keep your whole shin down on the right, reach your left leg back and just hold here. You don't wanna start moving before we're ready. Once you feel secure, whoop, move very, very slowly, pushing forward with that hand, that's the trick. It's just like how our lower body was before. Yeah, we have to be active in that strong base. Last one. Whew. And then put your knee down. Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys. Good stuff. So it's good to see that that kind of hip and knee and stability can come into play in other exercises too. All right. Okay, so we're going to come up to standing. We are going to take one of the straps 
around our thighs. We kind of did that on our backs, but now we're gonna do it standing, okay? So stand off to one side, face away from your foot bar, and then grab the loop that's closest to you and put your leg that's closest to the machine through the strap. Okay, so that's gonna end up having the strap right behind your kneecap, okay? On that back side of your leg, rope coming out the front. So now I'm still on that blue spring, change it if you need to. The further back I stand, closer to the foot bar, the heavier these springs are gonna feel. So you modify for you, okay? I'm gonna start pretty close to where my shoulder rests are, maybe back a little bit. I want my carriage just barely off the stopper at least, okay? Now step your free leg back. So my legs are staggered about hip width apart, hands where you'd like. Now, you're just gonna bend both of your knees to get down into a lunge. Stand up. Now the resistance is in that knee extension, and then we drop back down. So it's okay, this shouldn't feel like insanely high spring tension, okay? Unless that's what you need, okay? For me, it's not. This blue spring is just enough to give a little bit of distraction to pull that shin forward as I come down, and then giving these muscles something to push against as I get into that stretch of the knee, okay? Now again, I'm not trying to overextend my knee, we just have resistance bringing it to straight, okay? Now let's get down and hold in our lunge, take 10 little teeny tiny pulses, your carriage may or may not move, three, two, now stay down and hold, just lift your front heel and place it down, lift it, and place it down. <sighs> Try to keep stable, so the less the carriage moves on this one, the better. Three, <sighs> two, <sighs> one. Now put your heel down, drop a little lower, and then come up one last time. <sighs> All right, okay, turn away from your machine, bring the strap up above your kneecap, okay? And then stand about hip width apart. Okay, so have your carriage off of the stopper. Now we're gonna squat down and stand up. Okay, so you kind of shimmy side to side until you find the resistance that's right for you. But we do want pull on the springs the whole time. Okay, so now the job here is for my inner thigh to prevent my knee getting pulled to the side. So I have resistance to hold in line with the hip. All right, now get down and stay. Take a few little teeny tiny pulses. Good, carriage can probably stay pretty still. Three, two, now hold it and stay. I want you to externally rotate a little bit and then bring the knee back, okay? If it feels okay to you, you can go slightly internally rotated or just come to parallel. You decide, and I'm kind of rolling to the inside and the outside of my foot, so getting that ankle going. Last two, last one, find parallel, drop lower, and then stand up. Whew. Okay, we're gonna go in all four directions. So now we're gonna turn and face the foot bar, okay? Bring the strap up above your knee, stagger your legs, the strap leg is gonna be the back one. Keep it a little bit soft. Now, drop down, <sighs> knee gets close to the floor, and then I stand, okay? Now again, the knee doesn't need to get all the way straight on the back leg, <sighs> down, and then up. So it's all work through the front of those hips and abdominals and the thigh <sighs> to stay steady on that strap. Do that a few more times. Now get down and hold, do our little tiny pulses. Good. Now pause your lunge and do your heel lifts. Up and down, up and down. Just a couple more, up and down. Can you see me shaking? I am shaking. Last one, and then stand all the way up. Woo. Oh, that is no joke. Okay, last direction. Turn and face your machine. Step your free leg over the rope so that the rope is going in front of your shin, okay? The further you stand to the platform, the heavier. Now we're gonna squat straight down and then up. Okay, so now the work is for the side of the hip 
outer thigh. So try to keep the knee in line with your toes for now. And then get down and stay. Do your pulses. Take big deep breaths in and out. Long through the lower back. Now hold still and stay. Let your leg go out to the side and then internally rotate. Okay, now again, you go with the range that works for you, either from parallel to external or all the way to that internal rotation. Do that three more times. Now we want nice and resilient legs, right? We find ourselves in our daily lives in all sorts of positions that aren't perfect. So it's okay to kind of work through those places. Last one, find parallel and then stand up. Whew. All right, oops, carefully take your leg out and we'll go to all four sides on the other side. Okay, so here we go. Stand facing away from the foot bar, closest leg through, and then that will be your front foot. Stagger the other leg back. The strap is just behind your kneecap, okay? Squeeze your glute and then we go down and then up. So throughout every position, you shouldn't feel the carriage touch the stopper while you're doing the exercise. So if you find that to be true, it means you need to scoot closer to the platform and get a little greater initial tension. Okay, so we're working into that terminal knee extension. Yes, getting into the back of the knee, into those quads. All right, now get into your lunge and stay. Pulse up and down. Good, the carriage may or may not move, just a little bit. Now hold your lunge, lift your heel and lower it. Lift and lower. Try to keep the level of your head right where it is. Two more, one, and then stand up tall. All right, face away from your machine, move the strap up above your kneecap. So your calves are just right up against the side of your machine. Okay, so now it's for our inner thigh. Ready? We squat down and then we stand. Good. Feel the weight nice and spread between your pinky toe joint, your big toe joint, and your heel. Good. Two more. Now hold at the bottom. Do little small pulses. Equal weight in both legs. Now stay down and then allow that thigh to go in and out, in and out. Keep the bend of the knees stable. Good, just a few more. Last one, get to parallel and then stand. All right, turn so that you're facing your foot bar, band up above your thigh, stagger your free front, your free front, your free foot front. Okay. Your back knee will always stay a little soft, then you won't lose the loop, okay? So we go down, the tension gets greater on the springs, and then I press back up tall. <sighs> Front leg is welcome to get all the way straight. Back one keeps a slight bend, and that heel will stay up the whole time on that back leg. <sighs> so nice, two more. Now get down and stay, little pulses. Good, when in doubt, just breathe. And then pause, do your heel lifts, heel lowers. Heel lifts, heel lowers. Three, two, one, and then stand up tall. Oh. Okay, you guys, we've got one more. So now face your machine, step your free leg over the back so the rope comes in front of it, okay? Here we go, outer thighs, we squat down and stand. Yeah, it's okay if you have to stagger your standing foot back just slightly if the rope is bumping into it. Good, really feel that sensation right at the sides of your hips. Two more times, down. Now get down and hold, 10 little pulses. I say 10, but you know, 10-ish, just pulse. Okay, now get down and hold, and now allow that hip to go out and in. Yes, this is the theme of our day, is this movement. In and out, three more, last two, 
Last one, get to parallel and then stand tall. All right, you guys. Okay, hang your straps up. We are gonna take a stretch and then we will be done. So come down to your foot bar, bring it all the way back upright. Come on to your carriage. Okay, now this can be done either on like a half spring or a full spring or somewhere in the middle. I think I'm gonna do somewhere in the middle. So I'm gonna do a blue and a white or three quarters. So a medium and a light spring. It's kind of a good in-between for me. If it's a lot heavier, it'll be more about the back of your body. Lighter, it'll be more about the front. So now you're gonna place your one foot forward. I'm gonna do my left foot on the platform and then I'm gonna come up and just place my hands on my hips. So my shin is resting against the foot bar. I'm gonna take a breath in. I'm gonna send my leg back as I inhale. Try to drive my hip forward. My shin stays touching. Now just use those stretched muscles to come back, okay? So it's not a very big stretch because we're isolating just this back hip alone. Okay, do that a few more times. So leaving the shin on the foot bar is a good way to make sure that that leg stays still. Good, now try to keep your chest away from your thigh. It's gonna give you the maximum stretch through that back leg. Okay, now press back and hold. You can hold the foot bar if you need to. If not, you're just gonna keep that back hip stretching as you push with the front leg, bring the shin back to the foot bar, and then bring the carriage in. Yeah, I press back. I keep my abs short so I'm not overly stretching through the spine. Come in and then return. Okay, do that one more time. Back leg, front leg, in and up. Okay, now take your hands to the foot bar and just take a big old stretch back. Your head can go forward. You can hold it or you can kind of come up and down out of it. If you feel like you could hold a little lower, feel free to grab onto the rails and try to send the carriage out a little bit more. That'll be different for everybody. It's okay if that front leg isn't all the way straight. Try to keep a soft bend to it, actually. All right, now bring your hands back up to the foot bar, and then we'll do that on the other side. All right, so left foot back, right foot forward, shin touches, here we go. Push away, feel that length, and then draw the carriage in. Good, so for me, I'm inhaling on the stretch, and then I'm exhaling to feel that connection to the psoas to bring the leg back. Just what I'm doing. All right, now get down there and stay. Hold the back hip how it is as I push and pull and then return, yeah? I go back leg, front leg, and then reverse it. Good, couple more times. Last one. Okay, find the foot bar. Find a nice deep stretch through both legs. Doesn't have to be your biggest stretch right off the bat. We'll stay here for a breath or two. Yes, you're welcome to crawl a little deeper. Really feel your back glute pressing to keep the back foot pressing that carriage out. All right, climb back up. Bring the carriage in. All right, you guys, we are done. I hope you enjoyed that lower body focused reformer workout. Um, if you did, please give it a like. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. Uh, please write in the comments below if you have any suggestions for future videos. And if you know of a friend who would enjoy this video, please pass it their way. And I'll see you next time, bye.